Wilma Subra, this whole issue, when we were down in the Gulf, we kept hearing about it, of workers being told they actually couldn't wear respirators because it would make it look like the situation was dangerous. That's correct. Louisiana Environmental Action Network actually early in the process purchased protective gear and respirators and provided it to the fishermen because we didn't want them to be sick by being employed by BP. And BP actually told the fishers, if you bring the respirator on the boat and attempt to wear it, you're fired. And what are the effects of what people are inhaling? The Crude oil is made up of semi-volatile organics, which are known as polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons. They also have quite a volume of volatile organics, such as benzene, but that off-gasses fairly quickly as it is exposed to the air on the ocean. So most of what they're inhaling is the polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons, which are known and suspected cancer-causing agents. In addition, they have a lot of heart-lung impacts. So these fissures are short term exposed and are coming down with all these illnesses and we're fearing that they will be sick for the rest of their lives with the long term and as you said this is day 79 so it's not just a one or two time exposure now it's very long term exposure that they are going out on a daily basis and working over this oil slick and becoming sick. Well Masuber, where is the government regulation in all of this? OSHA is the agency in the United States that regulates workplace. And when we finally were able to engage OSHA and have them come down and start observing what was going on, they first went on what they call the onshore and nearshore workers, which are the individuals walking along the beaches, picking up the tar balls and the slick. And it's been very, very hot in Louisiana, and they said there were a lot of heat stress, and they actually tagged BP with not reporting all the injuries. But they said if we made the workers wear a respirator, it would make them have heat stress even more. And then finally, after a number of weeks, OSHA came out and said the workers on the beach could only work for 20 minutes and they would have to rest for 40 minutes in the shade with plenty of liquids. However, the fishermen that are working in the vessels of opportunity inshore and offshore are used to this weather. This is their fishing weather. This is their shrimping weather. So they are saying that they are being stressed by breathing the fumes much more so than they would be stressed if they wore a respirator. Merle Savage, if we're going to learn from history, it's pretty difficult actually. Um, Exxon embargoed all its records after the 1994 trials, which were settled out of court until 2020? This is what I understand. <clears throat> and it leaves us without any way <clears throat> to be compensated for our illnesses. <clears throat> Now, it's interesting because on July 1st, the um, Committee of Energy and Commerce demanded that Exxon release the information, the letter specifying that one of the committee's main concerns in investigating the spill is the long-term health effects of the cleanup workers. So we may be able to get access to this information. You wrote a book um, on your whole experience. In the letter, what did you think is the most important thing to tell the cleanup crews now in the Gulf of Mexico from your knowledge of cleaning up the Exxon Valdez? Well, just please do not listen to uh, what they are saying. BP is hiding everything they can in, in giving you the truth. So you need to think for yourself and understand that breathing this crude oil is definitely going to be harmful to you and even if there's a slightest chance that it could hurt you don't don't do it fifteen dollars an hour is not worth it your life is worth a lot more because i'm a victim and they exxon took away my health for 21 years understand it was not my choice had i known had I been given the opportunity, had someone leaked information or wrote me a letter and told me how toxic the crude oil would be, I would never, ever have gone out and cleaned the oil spill because I've had to suffer for 21 years and it doesn't get any better. Merle Savage, I want to thank you for being with us, General Foreman of the Cleanup Crews of the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill and Wilma Subra, chemist and president of Subra Company. Provide